Corgi and Bess originally arose out of a commission from the Metropolitan Opera to George Gershwin for an opera. And they said, uh, you pick the subject, Mr. Gershwin, we'll put it on. We think you're the, the bee's knees. And he came up with Porgy. And at that time, um, black people were not really welcome to perform on the stage of the Metropolitan Opera. Broadway was a little more uh, liberal about that. Uh, and uh, the, the result is that the, it finally ran out of momentum uh, trying to get it on at the Met. And DuBose and Dorothy Hayward, the co-librettists of Porgy and Bess the Opera, they had a play uh, just called Porgy, and it was performed at the Theater Guild, and the opera followed the play into the Theater Guild. Um, and it was oh, like nothing people had seen before. a serious piece by a serious composer, yet infused with the popular music of South Carolina uh, and the Tin Pan Alley uh, musical uh, song structure uh, that had grown up in New York City uh, at that particular time, of which George and Ira Gershwin were very much a part of it. And they, they have huge uh, library of songs from the shows that they have that they did together. Porgy's uniqueness in the operatic canon is the fact that it's American. I mean, we call it the Great American Opera. Uh, I think the fact that it is so highly theatrical and at the same time embraces a universal story and dips into the American popular culture as its thematic source material, and yet at the same time follows the precepts that were developing in opera, I think allow it to become an extraordinary masterpiece. And, you know, there are pieces that click with an audience and pieces that don't. And Porgy's one that has an extraordinary relationship with an audience. It's important to remember Gershwin went to Charleston, South Carolina. He went to those churches. He studied how they prayed. He went on the docks. He heard those fishermen yank those ropes. And, you know, it takes a, a long pull to get there. You know, and, he, and, he, and you, you found all those things finding their way into the opera like the strawberry woman and the crab man, these vendors who were hawking, you know, and so it's a really an extraordinary thing. We began uh, thinking of bringing the production to San Francisco and made the arrangements to do so. And I thought that Eric Owens would be a great porgy in the tradition of Donnie Ray Albert and others who were, who have performed it for uh, the companies I've worked for over the years. He's, I think, he, there's more dimension to him than just, you know, he's more than just a disability. He's more than just a poor guy. He's more than just someone who hasn't loved before and, you know, finding this wonderful what he considers a wonderful woman for himself. Uh, he's all those things, and, and, uh, and I think that's what makes Bess fall for him, because she, she, she doesn't find him attractive in the slightest at the beginning. But I think she grows to love him as she learns who he is, and, and he's very simple, 
yet <laughs> there's complexity in that simplicity. <laughs> How's that for an oxymoron? With Eric, we spent a lot of one-on-one -on -one time talking about the character, talking about what makes Porgy tick. Of course, we have a wonderful novel to go back to, but we also have to think about the character in the context of the world today. What does it mean to be a black American now? Uh, how does that relate to the story in a contemporary light? How does it fuse with the incredible romance of the story? And, and Eric and I just spent a lot of one-on-one -on -one time developing the character, the nuances. And most of that work when you are, are with a, a performer like Eric is really about that one-on-one -on -one time. It's like an investment. Uh, it's, it's like uncovering the earth to find the character that, that's below ground to help with the seeds so that when it grows, he's allowed to flourish and, and bring his own personality, his own world, and fuse it with the character. And to me, that's the most important journey that you can make with any performer. Lakita had been in the Young Artist Program in Houston, and I said, I think she's got bass in her. And so I put the two of them together. I like the character of Bess because, unlike anything I've ever done before to this date, she is, she's, she's just sparkles with fire. She's so much fun. She's so much fun. What I appreciate about the role is that I am able to be multifaceted and I am not just one dimensional. Her movements, her, uh, her walk, her talk, everything of course influenced by drugs and alcohol, but um, there's something about that freeness in her body and that freeness in her movement that I really appreciate. Yeah. For Crown, I love the duet. And a lot of it is because we don't have this rhythmic pattern very often. Um, this, you know, here are these two characters that can't keep their hands off each other. They have this connection. <laughs> and um, Gershwin writes at this moment, oh, bump. I mean, it is, it's a grind. My God, this is just such a, such a great quote. It's another great melody line from Gershwin. Just yet another one. And, um... And, and to have that, that those basses play that um cha um ta um ta, there's just nothing like it. And what, of course, the staging at this moment is really evocative and, and very creative between the characters, to say the least. Well, I think Serena is a very complex character because she is this woman who's so religious and so righteous and always kind of, you know, checking people and looking down on other people. And she happens to be married to this guy, Robbins, who drinks and gambles, and which is not really the relationship that you would think someone like Serena would have. During the funeral service, I think Serena is just thinking, how am I going to make it without my husband, with these children? But how am I going to make it? How am I going to make it through? What's going to happen? And then a woman in this community with no husband, you know, most of the women in the community have husbands. Now she's left all alone. So I think she's worried about that. Because I, I know several sporting lives, I know or uh, sport, my sporting life is a mixture of, of, of different people I've known in my life. 
I've studied him in the movie, but I've also studied how he moves with, when he performs and how he's charming and, and you're just there with him. And it's, it's, it's very in this box, but you go to this little space with him. But for me, a street life, I go back to being in Alabama. Every now and then there was um, a guy who would come in, he'd come with this van and he was what we called in the, <laughs> the hood a hot man. So he had, um, he'd have stolen goods, you might, you might say, some shirts and music and different things. And he always had a, an array of, of things. And even though my family was very religious, um, he had this appeal about him that my mother never really questioned. She would always, she would always buy something from this man. Uh, even though knowing the background, I'm sure she knew the background of these pieces, these stolen goods, but he was charming. He was, he was a salesman. That's quite a, quite a lot of different little characters and all that come into play uh, with Sportline. As a totality, this is the greatest uh, Porky cast from the vocal point of view that I've ever been involved with. Well, I think we have eight or nine role debuts in the San Francisco Opera production, which is really wonderful for me because I get to, you know, sort of <laughs> brainwash them with my ideas about the piece right from the beginning. I would say there's elements of Stravinsky, there's elements of Ravel, then there's, then there's pieces that have to be jazz style. And when it's jazz style, you've got to rely on the musicians, uh, you know, to, you got to give them the freedom to then uh, relax. And those, the jazz style pieces, by the way, they're just, woman is a sometime thing, ain't necessarily so, both that's leaving from New York, redheaded woman. It's those pieces that um, are, overtly in a jazz style and allow for uh, a looser interpretation of the rhythmic values as one does uh, when it's uh, a la jazz. So there's this big plate, not to mention the enormous role for the chorus. Musically, it's, it's, it's a challenging role. If people think of Gershwin and they think of, you know, easy sort of Broadway kind of tunes, and, and it's a, quite a complex score. I've, I feel very connected to this piece, but um, I love it. Every time I hear it, the, the overture starts, and it's this big ring, and we're there. Every time I think about the music, and I hear the music, I just, I get so happy. Growing up as an African-American boy in the South, um, it's such a, a deep-hearted connection. Um, the music is so genuine to me. Uh, most of the music is, is my experience growing up in a Pentecostal church um, with the gospel and, and songs that are just passed down. They're not really written, but passed down. So I feel a definite, a definite connection with this piece. Porky and Bess is grand opera. And I want to say you know, all caps, actually. Um, and, you know, everyone thinks, oh, it's, you know, he wrote musicals and, and um, you know, it's just a light little little thing. Well, yes, you know, there's um, it ain't necessarily so written for a minstrel singer. Um, the part of the role of sport in life that is a lighter role in the opera. Like most operas have lighter character tenor type roles in an opera. Um, this opera has that as well. But the moment that you hear da da di da di da da, which was Gershwin's most favorite, beloved melody line. That's best you is my woman. Yes, you is my woman. It's grand opera. And everywhere I go, no matter what walks of life, no matter what color, race, or creed, when the show was done, people cheer. People revere Porgy, people revere the, um, the people of Catfish Row. His journey 
is is this incredible journey of the individual triumphing against all odds. I don't think it's about that Porgy is going to go and find Bess. It's about the fact that he's breaking out of everything that has constrained him in his life so far. And to me, that is the really palpable, exciting message about the story, the fact about this one man breaking away and journeying outside of his world to a bigger dream. I thank God that we have this story that's a part of Americana, that's a part of black culture. This piece is huge and long and wonderful and it has something for dancing and, you know, singing and a love story and a, you know, a love triangle actually. Um, it's, it's an amazing story, Porgy and Bess, and such an exciting piece. Does he make it to New York? <laughs> Who knows?